My name is Wendy Archer and I want to welcome you to the third annual Bubbles of Love Day DFW and the eighth annual International Parental Alienation Awareness Day. We're so glad that you're here with us today. At this very moment, people are literally gathering all around the world. As we gather here in South Lake, Texas, people are also gathering in Ohio, Illinois, Georgia, Alabama, California, Florida, Minnesota, North Carolina, Connecticut, Mississippi, and many other states. They are gathering in Canada, Costa Rica, the Czech Republic, Finland, Lithuania, Portugal, Tunisia, and Poland. You see, parental alienation is not about one person or one family. Parental alienation is an epidemic causing families unbearable pain and suffering all around the world. 14 North Texas mayors have proclaimed today Parental Alienation Awareness Day. The North Texas cities and towns that have proclaimed today Parental Alienation Awareness Day are Southlake, Bartonville, Hearst, Keller, Grapevine, Little Elm, Westlake, Watauga, Trophy Club, Allen, Euless, Colleyville, Plano, and North Richland Hills. We're very honored to have Mayor Pro Tem Tom Lombard of North Richland Hills here with us today. <laughs> and uh, we also had uh, South Lake City Council Member Alzito here. Uh, he had to go to an appointment, but he will be back um, shortly. And we really appreciate all of the support that we've received from the city of South Lake over the last three years. Um, Mayor Lombard, will you please read the proclamation for us? She promoted me. She promoted me. Mayor Pro Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here with you this morning representing the 14 cities that are declaring uh, this parental alienation awareness and bubbles of love day. And I have a short proclamation that I'm going to read that all of the 14 cities signed off on. Whereas Parental Alienation Awareness Day is celebrated to spread the simple message that children need to and should be allowed to give and receive the love of both their parents and extended families, and whereas behaviors such as speaking negatively about a parent to or in front of a child can destroy the bond between a loving parent and child, and whereas with awareness comes education, understanding, and the power to stop the abuse on innocent children caught in the crossfire of the people they love, and whereas this year is the 8th annual Parental Alienation Awareness Day and people around the world will join together in blowing bubbles for 10 minutes at 12 noon on April the 25th, 2013 to show their support in spreading the simple <coughs> message of love for all children. Now therefore, April 25th, 2013 is hereby proclaimed parental, parental Alienation Awareness and Bubbles of Love Day in North Texas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> you probably know that April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, but you might not know that many experts call parental alienation the worst form of child abuse. So what is parental alienation? The simplest definition is Parental alienation is when one parent tries to damage or destroy the relationship a child has with the other parent. There are many behaviors and actions that alienating parents and alienating step-parents use to try to destroy the bond between innocent children and a loving parent. Some of the behaviors are subtle, such as making loud sighs or rolling of the eyes when the other parent is mentioned, indicating that the parent is not worthy of respect. Some behaviors are slightly more blatant, such as verbally disparaging the other parent to or in front of the child. Some behaviors are not just extreme, but also illegal, such as violating court orders, custody orders, and refusing to send children to the other parent when they are legally obligated to do so. Violation of custody orders can often be confirmed by accessing public documents. Alienators not only try to control and manipulate their children's thoughts and emotions, they try to control and manipulate the thoughts and emotions of everyone else too, and they are excellent at it. 
Alienators are often very charming and can easily convince and persuade people that they are a perfect parent and a pillar of the community, while convincing and persuading people that the other parent is somehow unfit or has done something to deserve to not have a relationship with the child. Alienated parents are known as target parents because alienators are literally on target to destroy them. A highly skilled, charming, and persuasive alienator might say, I told my child they should see the other parent, but the child doesn't want to. They might say or imply that the child doesn't want to see the other parent because the other parent is somehow unstable or has done something terrible to deserve to be rejected by the child. Some extremely manipulative alienators will even stage opportunities to say to the child in front of other people, you should go see your other parent. As one formerly alienated young adult says, alienated children know the right answer. We know to say in front of people that we don't want to see the other parent. It's important to know that an alienated child can be any age. They can be three, 13, 23, 33, or older. As long as they continue to be under the control and manipulation of the alienator, they will remain alienated from the other parent. Tragically, they are almost always alienated from their grandparents as well. Frequently, an alienator will use their resources to try to financially destroy the target parent. It's not uncommon for a target parent to end up being unable to provide food and clothing for their children, to be made nearly bankrupt and homeless as they spend every single penny trying to save their child, all the while begging the alienator to simply let them have interference-free relationships with their children. As I mentioned, alienators try to control and manipulate the thoughts and emotions of others in addition to their children. Alienators will usually try to befriend, charm, and persuade other parents, teachers, coaches, counselors, school administrators, church pastors, and community leaders. Alienators do this in an effort to create a perfect image of themselves and to build an army to help them alienate the child from the other parent. Some alienators will even go so far as to publicly disparage and even blatantly lie about the target parent in front of their own children and ask other people to join them in disparaging the target parent, again, in front of the children. As unbelievable as it may sound, some people agree to and participate in this cruel and unthinkable behavior to assist an alienator, again, because the alienator can be so charming and convincing. I invite you to say hello and chat with the many target parents and target grandparents we have here today. You can tell they are target parents and target grandparents because they are wearing name tags and buttons. Ask them questions. See for yourself that parental alienation really can happen to anyone. For example, one target parent here with us today is Dr. Heather Myers. Dr. Myers is a respected physician and she is a fantastic mom and she is a target parent who has been alienated from her oldest daughter. Dr. Myers and I met with many congressmen in Washington, D.C. this past February to talk about parental alienation and judicial accountability. We were met with sincere interest and are optimistic that legislation making parental alienation a punishable crime will someday become a reality as it is in Brazil. In Brazil, it is a crime to attempt to alienate a child from the other parent. And when the crime is committed, custody of the children is given to the target parent, as it should be. I would like to read a few sentences from letters that were written by people whose lives have been affected by parental alienation. I recently received an email from a broken-hearted parent that said the following, Thank you for your work on parental alienation. I have been kept from my children for 31 months by their vindictive mother who just wanted revenge. Before that, I was overseas for 10 months serving my country. It isn't right that I have to do without my kids, whom I have loved more than anything since the day they were born. My children are not pawns to be used in an adult game, nor are anyone else's. A formerly alienated young adult wrote a very special letter to a parent this year in which they said, I regret the times I refused to see or talk to you more than you know. Thank you for fighting for me, even when I said I hated you. A young alienated boy took a huge risk this past year when he wrote to his mom. He said, Mom, they are watching you. They are trying to see if we talk to each other. Choose your friends wisely. 
when I turn 18, things will be different. When I turn 18, I will be able to see you again. The sad truth is when that little boy turns 18, the alienating parent will still do everything he can to keep him away from his mom. We are now talking openly about teen anxiety, teen depression, and teen suicide in our community. It was my pleasure to approach our school district this past year to ask them to acknowledge these issues. I did so on behalf of my son and in honor of his best friend, Nick Borkowski. My daughter, Rachel, my son, Clayton, and I were all thrilled and so grateful when the school district and Spark agreed to all of the ideas we proposed. Our dream of suicide awareness and prevention in the school district in honor of Nick was becoming a reality. A committee was formed that included Dr. Rollins and Annie Tam from Carroll Senior High School, Laura Hill and Suzanne Maisto of Spark, Annette Borkowski, several students, and myself. The historic Spark meeting soon followed with the unveiling of a full initiative, including peer group support meetings, which are now held at the high school and senior high school. But we must not fall short and ignore the causes of teen anxiety, depression, and suicide. One of the biggest causes of teen anxiety, depression, and suicide is unhealthy family dynamics. I have personally met with the chief of police for our community, Chief Milet. Chief Milet and others who actually deal with the tragedies in our community confirm that unhealthy family dynamics are one of the major contributors to depression, anxiety, and suicide among our children. It is a fact that children who are alienated from one parent by the other parent suffer from depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, self-harm such as cutting, and oftentimes consider suicide. It is a fact that all children naturally love, want, and need relationships with both of their parents. We have made great progress with parental alienation awareness and education over the last few years, both to the public and professionals. Our organization, Parental Alienation Awareness Organization USA, has grown to 10 chapters across the United States. Our chapters are located in North Texas, Austin, Texas, Florida, Ohio, Georgia, Indiana, Illinois, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and San Diego, California. Our North Texas chapter was honored to be a 2012 Civic Group of the Year finalist, recognized for improving the lives of others in this community. With social awareness, professional education, and political interest, we are headed in the right direction. We are also very honored to have the support of many parental alienation experts. No expert is more prestigious than Dr. Richard Warshak. Dr. Warshak, a graduate of Cornell University, Dr. Warshak is a clinical research and consulting psychologist and clinical professor of psychology at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. Dr. Warshak's groundbreaking research, best-selling books, and passionate advocacy for children have made him one of the world's most respected authorities on divorce, child custody, and the psychology of alienated children. As a White House consultant and through his writing, speeches, legislative, and courtroom testimony, videos, and workshops, Dr. Warshak has had a profound impact on the law and on the well-being of families around the world. It is a unique and special opportunity to see Dr. Warshak, and we are very fortunate and honored to have him here with us. Please help me welcome Dr. Richard Warshak. Thank you, Wendy, for that marvelous introduction. Um, this has become a tradition now for me to speak here. Uh, some of you may know that I've come to uh, use the term Plutoed parents to describe those who are the targets of their children's rejection. Uh, because like, like the planet Pluto, they've been demoted uh, excommunicated from the family of planets, in this, in at your case, excommunicated from the family of your children. And so I uh, can title my remarks, the annual remarks I give at this event, the State of Plutoverse. And what I'd like to say is that uh, indeed, as Wendy said, a lot of progress has been made. This past year I spent uh, quite a bit of time educating judges and attorneys about this problem. They're very receptive to learning about it. They are particularly interested in what can be done to prevent this problem. Uh, some very creative judges are actually assigning books like Divorce Poison and DVDs like Welcome Back Pluto to, 
parents who file for divorce in order to educate them about how important it is to keep their children out of the middle and to make sure that the children know that the children are not being divorced by a parent and aren't being persuaded to divorce a parent. Uh, sometimes the judge will ask the parents to write a book report to show that they've learned these important lessons. There are a couple of uh, things I see on the horizon that are making the task more difficult and, and will need to be a focus of our efforts to educate the public and courts about the problem. One of them has to do with this concept of, of what has been called hybrid alienation. And it comes very close to blaming the victim of this problem. What happens is that courts and evaluators who are struggling to understand what could lead a child to reject a loving parent begin to find fault with the target parent. Maybe you spoke harshly to your child on occasion. Well, what parent doesn't speak harshly to their child on occasion? What happens in these families, though, is that the other parent exploits any mistakes, any apparent weaknesses and flaws to convince the children that they're better off without that parent in their lives. And uh, sometimes the motive is punishment. It's a vindictive motive. Sometimes the motive is merely to try to seem superior, to be the superior parent and to encourage the children and society to feel that the other parent is not necessary in the child's life. Um, it's very, very important that courts understand uh, the difference between a parent whose harsh behavior has driven the children away and a parent who would be what we would call a good enough parent where absent the influence of the favorite parent, no child would come to judge a parent and identify the parent as only the mistakes that parent has made or only the times of conflict. Um, again, that would be sort of blaming the victim. And I think what's important for the courts to recognize is that children need two parents. They need to feel free to love both parents. They need to feel free to receive that love, to respect and have affection for a parent. And that it's a parent's obligation to fulfill those needs just as much as it is a parent's obligation to fulfill a child's needs for nutrition, for education, for uh, dental care, it's extremely important. So a parent who goes to court saying, my child doesn't want to see the other parent, needs to be able to explain <coughs> to the court what it is that they've done or not done to fail to meet the needs of their child to be able to maintain a positive relationship with the other parent. The other problem that courts face is that even when they understand the problem, particularly with teenagers, the court feels like their hands are tied. How can we force a child to have a relationship with the other parent if the child doesn't want this? How can we force children to love a parent? And up till now, the courts have been concerned that a child will run away, will just will be violent, and of course you have to be concerned about that. Fortunately, there are more programs available now to help children adjust to a transition if the court does in fact say enough is enough. Someone has to stand up and be the adult for the family and protect the child. And we know that teenagers are notorious for following the pack, for being influenced by others, uh, for not always exercising the most mature judgment. So it's up to the courts to step in at that point and to say you will repair this damaged relationship with your mother or with your father. It is not your choice, just as it is not your choice whether to go to school, whether to see a doctor when you need to. Um, and the courts now have some programs in place so that they can provide for a safe transition for the children in those situations. So I think that's, uh, that's important to, to know. And I just want to uh, close by saying that uh, recently, a reporter contacted me and asked, why don't we hear more about parental alienation? Well, of course, this organization is designed to, to overcome that problem. But one of the reasons is that parents are embarrassed when their children reject them because they know that others are standing there wondering what did she or he do wrong to, to merit that rejection. And in fact, many parents in your situation have themselves done soul searching 
what have I done wrong? What mistake have I, have I done? I think as more and more parents and society is aware of the problem, it's going to become easier for parents to feel open about expressing what's gone on, to understand that it's wrong. And my hope is, and I set the target goal last year of 2015, that by then we would have reached the tipping point where it would become very difficult for a parent whose children are rejecting the other parent to stand up and act as though uh, that's going to be taken as, as an okay phenomenon. That you can go into court and say, well, my children just don't want to see their father, or they, 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 they don't like their mother, and, and we want to get to the point where they will expect that the judge is going to look down on them, look very harshly, and that the friends and the other parents on the soccer field are not going to look harshly at the rejected parent, but instead are going to say, what's wrong that you have done such a poor job of giving your children what they need? So, thanks very much. Well, I think you can see why uh, Dr. Warshak is considered the world's most renowned and respected expert on parental alienation. And again, we are so honored and fortunate to have him attend our event every year and support uh, what we do. So thank you again, Dr. Warshak, so much. He's a really amazing person. For me, today is not just the 8th Annual International Parental Alienation Awareness Day and 3rd Annual Bubbles of Love Day DFW. It was exactly one year ago today, just moments before I stepped up to the microphone to make my speech, that I received a text message from my oldest daughter. The text message said, I love you. She has not texted me again since that day, one year ago. Even though nothing bad has ever happened between us, and even though we were as close as any mother and daughter could be, we have been kept apart for 1,367 days. That's three years, eight months, and 28 days. Perhaps at this moment you're realizing that you might know an alienator. Perhaps at this moment you're realizing that you have assisted an alienator. Today I would like to offer you a challenge. I challenge you to become part of the solution. As I said, many experts call parental alienation the worst form of child abuse. Yet parental alienation is the only form of child abuse where people say, I don't want to get involved, or it's none of my business. Child abuse is everyone's business. When you choose to ignore child abuse, when you assist an abuser, you are helping to hurt a child. Please don't ignore this form of abuse. Please don't do anything to assist an alienator. Instead, please tell alienators that you cannot and will not support or condone their actions. If an alienator claims that they want their child to see the other parent, tell the alienator, when your child is reunified with the other parent, then I will know you're sincere. Do you have the courage and integrity to do this? Many children around the world are praying that you do. If you are an alienator and have come here to observe our gathering today, we're sincerely glad that you are here. No one wants to embarrass you. Dr. Warshak mentioned in a recent television interview that target parents do all they can to stay on the high road. The only thing target parents want is to be able to have interference-free, loving relationships with their children. If you're an alienator, please stop alienating your child from the other parent. Don't just say you want your child to see the other parent. Ensure that they see the other parent as you have the power to do. We also know that bullying is one of the most damaging things that can ever be done to our children. Make no mistake about it, parental alienation is bullying at its worst. We must not just say we put our kids first. We must truly put our kids first. Putting kids first starts at home by teaching them to love, not hate. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, I hope you enjoy the entertainment that we have. Make sure to get a parent goodie bag before you leave today um, and be sure to get a bottle of bubbles um, because in just a moment we're all going to blow bubbles together to show that just as bubbles flow freely so should the love that a child has for both parents thank you so much